Hello, hello. Welcome to the Eddie Conversation Podcast. My name is Eddie V. Hill, and I am your host. This is episode number 90, and joining me today is Matt Groove. Hey, everyone out there in TV land. <laughs> yes, hello, hello. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, so let's, I want to do a little, little super easy foundational stuff, sure. just so people kind of get a gauge of on who 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 you are maybe i'll just throw some stuff out and you can confirm or deny if this (laughs) is you who are you i'll say uh background in dancing yes uh hip-hop yes specifically or that's how you got into it yeah i I got into the industry through dance yep okay um stunts yes i pivoted from dance into stunts (laughs) great great and i i have i have uh here mentioned martial arts in wushu and kali yeah, so wushu background and Filipino martial arts or Kali, yeah. Kali. Mm-hmm. Acting, actor? Yes, transition from stunts into acting <laughs> as well. Okay, in, in that order, in that order. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so that's, yeah, dancing, stunts, acting. I feel like I'm missing something in here somewhere. What, el- what else, what else? What else do I do? <laughs> yeah, let's just throw some stuff out. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, I'm actually in school right now to get my business admin degree, focus on entrepreneurship. I started a small business. And um, yeah, I think overall, um, umbrella-wise, uh, I used to really define myself as a dancer and then a stunt performer and then an actor. So now I just say to everybody, I'm an artist. I think at the end of the day, like I like to create. I like to be creative. And uh, actually, I used to teach dance as well too. When I was in the dance world, I would I would teach classes. So, I just all encompassing of everything. <laughs> okay. Yes. Dance. Because I yeah dance, ugh, dancer, dance dance teacher. Mm-hmm. Is that same as dance coach? Similar thing. Yeah. I w- I would say I think people get the misconception that when you're uh, a dance teacher, that's you know you just teach dance. Of course, that's what we do. But I think. Being a teacher in that sense, uh, I've got to be a coach in that in that way where when I come to class, I, I teach people how to move and everything, but I also like to build people's confidence up. And I used to actually coach um, 18 and under groups. And so I, it was ironic too, because I didn't, I didn't like working with kids at the time. I was pro- probably maybe like 25 or so, 23, 20, between 23, 25, I was coaching kids 18 and under. And uh, I got to be a role model for them. And, you know, I have two younger brothers. So that's in that position. I, I didn't know how much I learned from that position or what I took away from that position until I got older. And so it's been really awesome to be a part of someone's life and coach them in that way outside of the dance, you know, like just life values. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot of responsibility there. <clears throat> yeah, because you said you didn't know what you're biting off at that time. You're like a mid twenties dude, <laughs> yeah. just teaching kids you don't want to teach. You're like, yeah. what? you're like, wait a second, I'm impacting lives here. I have yes. lots of yes, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny. Okay, and then I know also we can get to this more a little bit later too, or we'll see how it happens. Mm-hmm. But um, dance coach, dance choreographer. Mm-hmm. I know you have some of that experience too. Is that yeah. is that correct? Yes, okay. uh, I've I've got to choreograph for actually most recently the most the thing that I'm most uh, proud of recently is I I got to work with a group um, I don't know if you guys know about Turning Red I got to be a choreographer for their live performance at the Unforgettable Gala and so I got to work with the the artists who sang um, who they played Four Town and they were the fictional boy band group and so I got to choreograph slash movement direct for them for their live performance and that was uh, a pretty fun experience for me great great (laughs) because I I mean like me I'm I'm I want to talk about a lot of stuff here but (laughs) I know we'll do that yeah I know I, I I like to lean toward um process too like being that I don't have that dance experience um, or dance background in any capacity. I'm, I've never directed a dance sequence. I've never collaborated with another, like a dance choreographer. Um, so I'm just kind of, yeah, I'm curious on how that plays and how that works and maybe even, yeah, okay. So we'll get, we'll, we'll see. All right. <laughs> I did, I did choreograph for a dance film. So if you want to talk about that as well, we, we can. Okay, great. <laughs> um, but to start what I want to talk about here, I know, uh, 
I got a little, um, I have my notes here. What I want to talk about is kind of like, I don't know how to, I want to go to the kind of like beginning a little bit on like pre, right now you define yourself as artist. Yes. And I'm thinking about young Matt. <laughs> oh, young Matt. <laughs> young Matt. And I don't know when you think of young Matt, like how young young Matt is, whether that's five-year-old, 15-year-old, but where you, where, who you are now kind of started, like when you j- jumped on this artist path, mm. where that path starts, and a little bit about what got that path started and maybe where the other paths in that at that time you were thinking about going, but you started going this way okay. as a vague start. Sure. And then uh, we can transition from that into, I'm curious about talking confidence. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Okay. So we'll start from the beginning, I guess. Yeah, and yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. And so pretty much how I got into dance was, I was, I was, I still remember it to this day. I was in sixth grade. And we had just, this is a time, a point in time in life when, when guys and girls were hanging out <laughs> and, you know, you're going through puberty, you're in sixth grade, right? And so I, I just remember we were all gather out, gathered around a TV and this was, we were watching MTV back when MTV played music videos <laughs> and we were watching, I remember it was Usher, You Make Me Wanna, right? That was the dance video. That was his song. And this, I had no idea who this guy was. And he was just dancing and gliding all over the, the, the place, you know. And, and granted, I, I knew about Michael Jackson at that time. And, but he was the one that just stuck out, stuck out to me, right? And so just to watch him dancing on, on screen and, and TV, and I was like, wow, I, I really want to do that. And that was pretty much that, the thing that got me into dance. And then from that point on, I found out about the youth center, literally the recreation center. I, I'm from Orange County. I'm from Irvine. And I found out about this place, and there was people there, high school kids that were teaching break dancing, more more so like not formally, but just you just stand there and just talk to someone, and be like, hey, show me how to do this move. And from that point on, I just got into that world of of dancing. So freestyling mainly, street styles, hip hop, you know, break dancing, popping, and that. And from that point on, it kind of just. I knew that that's where I wanted to go with dance, and I, I knew that I wanted to entertain people. And so from from that point on, I just studied dance, and then I got into choreography. And so if you want to guide me in that, I feel like I can I can keep going on and on, but I wanted a little more direction for myself. <laughs> yeah, okay. So you're talking, I'm, I'm thinking back to sixth grade, and you're being affected by this music video on the screen, and you're like, that's... I want to give that feeling to other people or so there's probably that you, like you said, you want to give that feeling to other people and entertain. And also that looks cool. And I want to also, and <laughs> yes. I want to do that too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Youth center, finding that space. But did, when did you start? Th- was it like a recreational thing that you thought about at the time or did it ever switch to like, I'm, I want to do this professionally? Like mm. how does, yeah, that, that whole, how does that play? Thank you. Thanks for that direction, that redirect. So basically how I got into the industry or how I turned it into a profession was that, you know, I, I had got into dance that way. I was inspired by that music video. And then at, at some point on after high school, I got into, I found out about the collegiate dance world at UCI and I, I joined a dance team there. And from that point on, when I was part of the dance team, it's very team oriented and I learned a lot of skills being a part of that. And when we talk about how I, I how I got to coaching kids was because of that dance team. They started a junior division and they asked me to be one of their directors along with another friend of mine, Karen. <laughs> Shout out to you, Coco. And so pretty much from that point on, once I joined the dance team, I realized that, hey, I I think I want to make I think I want to go pro. I want to go professional. I want to do this. And so I found out about a dance agency uh, or auditioning to be a part of the industry. And so pretty much I, when I found out about how to get an agent or w- w- how do you navigate through the industry, I found out, you know, be a part of an agency and then you'll get sent out to audition. So in 2007 is, is pretty much when I consider myself becoming a professional. And I, I booked my first agent with DDO at the time, which is now MTA. 
And that's pretty much how I decided that, you know what, I, I guess I could make this a career. Okay. All right. So prior to that, hap I mean, I guess just for the sake of my curiosity, mm -hmm. what other avenues were you considering going down at that time like i know off camera before i was filling you in on my <laughs> pre my pre my pre-film life like i went to school to study in mining engineering and got my bachelor's degree in there and stuff in my so my alt path was like <laughs> living in the middle of nowhere mm. in the desert and digging holes <laughs> <laughs> well i'm not you know leading the team that's digging the holes there you go leading <laughs> yeah so i'm still you know directing the mine instead but um, were you, you know, like going through high school and stuff, being that that wasn't really on your mind yet, what were you considering at that time or what were, mm. do you, had, yeah, I don't know. Wow. Yeah. High school, Matt, I, at, at that point in time, I, I knew in high school that I wasn't, I didn't take SATs or, well, all my friends were prepping for that and they were, you know, planning to go to college. I honestly didn't know what I wanted to do at that point in time. And I, yeah, I didn't know dance was where I was going to go, even though that I was doing it recreationally. And that was prior to that. Again, in my college years is where I decided that I wanted to turn it into a career. And so, yeah, honestly, I, I don't even know what I would have been doing ba back then. I probably, my mom always, <laughs> she got my brothers to do this or one of my brothers to do this, but you know, being Filipino, the, path is usually that you you go to nursing school and you become a nurse and then you provide for the family you know and I had always been that person in my family that like no I want to do the things that make me happy and so yeah when you ask me like what I would have done if I didn't do dance I honestly don't know <laughs> but mm -hmm. yeah okay so you have you said two two other siblings I do yes two and other siblings. they're both older no younger I, I am I am the kuya, which means older brother in, in Tagalog. So I, yeah, I have two younger brothers. Okay, so the pressure was kind of on then, right? <laughs> yeah. Because you were saying like one of them actually did go into like the nursing or the the, the traditional the traditional route, um, but they didn't bail you out till later. It's like, you know, <laughs> no. you're just like, oh, thank you so much for taking that weight off. Like, yes. Almost, <laughs> it's like this, yeah, that's okay. Very interesting. Very yeah. interesting. So you were, you were, you were primed for being kind of almost ready to make a leap into dance when the opportunity came up. Is what it sounds like. Because you were, there's nothing else really to distract from this path that you were kind of already on without knowing it. You right. Know, okay, right. Yeah, I guess I'm doing this, and you loved it. Which yeah, <laughs> I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I had gone into. You know, from high school, I went to community college, and I pretty much failed my first year, exactly my first year, and maybe a little bit my second year. And I was focusing on dance at that time. I was trying to balance being in a collegiate team and, and, and doing school, but also the accountability. You know, when I went to community college, when you're in high school, if you miss class, if you, if you don't show up, you go to detention, and there's all these accountability things. But then when I transitioned into community college, there was nobody to tell me to go to school, nobody. And then I had to bring myself to school. My, my parents weren't driving me. And so I just had to show up for myself. So I literally did not show up for myself in high school. So I, I, I think just dance and doing things outside of school was always on my mind. And I, I think that that creativity or just being creative or being active in that way was the only thing fueling me at the time. Yeah, the creative outlet. Great. Nice. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, I, so to stick in the dance world for a second... To get the a nice overview of maybe giving giving people that are less familiar with you some idea of your experience in that space, um, what kind of and for I guess for me too because I, yeah, <laughs> I I know I've scrubbed through like your Instagram and stuff, but it's there's you have a, you have a lot going on on there. So <laughs> yeah, it's very eclectic. <laughs> um, what spaces like what kind of dance experience like what experience I don't know, just. Dancing, what what is dance? What, yeah, where are you dancing, and what stages have you been on? And that, yeah, because I know you've you've done competitions, you've danced for Disney, you've danced for I don't know, probably like films and commercial gigs. Like, yes, you've been all over the place. So, what what sticks out is like the way different areas and different different ways you've incorporated that into uh, life. Into life, yes. Thank you. I think 
all my experiences have culminated into things that allow me to do what I do and just feel comfortable on stage. And I think the very first time that I remember being on stage was the Northwood High School talent show, you know? And and I remember that was the first experience and where I learned about like just watching a performance and trying to recreate it. And it was an Usher dance performance. And so some of the experience that I like to highlight in, in my dance life in my career is, you know, I was on stage for, uh, um, what was that? Hip Hop International. And so I'm a gold medalist with my crew mix elements. And what else? A lot of collegiate performances. That was kind of what, but honestly, the thing that at the core of it was that breakdancing background being at those community events and you know this is all recreational and just learning how to build that confidence learning how to just dance in front of a crowd and battle somebody meaning like you know like I don't know you watch movies and like you know they call somebody out on the dance floor and then you just try to one-up each other and so that was kind of the core of of where that confidence came from and then now you take it into a grand stage with a group of people and you are on a common goal literally to you know, to dance well and to place because it was competition, you know. And so that kind of background brought me into the dance world with my crew Mixed Elements. We competed on uh, at Hip Hop International, which was held in Las Vegas at the time. And from that show, they kind of, they cast people from that show to be on America's Best Dance Crew. So that was probably one of the biggest stages I've been on is on on, on TV, <laughs> dancing in front of national audience on MTV. And so that was a really big experience, and I learned a lot from that experience. And then from that point on, dancing in commercials. I haven't done a movie yet, but just being on set, being hired to dance, and, and just to perform, like, just like that, like, just to turn it on, you know, that has been, I think, that, again, that goes back to the core of, of when I first started dancing and, and that confidence level. Speaking of confidence levels. <laughs> Okay, so that gives a nice overview there for me. Um, <clears throat> how does one how how do you go about the getting into like like again you started from from no dance experience into youth center into all right let me pick up this move and how do you do this move how do you do this move and then performing in front of people and then the dance battle aspect like. And team aspect, there's like lots of different levels of performance. Like you said, performing on command too sometimes. It's like, all right, you know how to do it, but also we need you to do the thing you do at this time, mm -hmm. like right now. Yeah, like you kind of know what's coming up. But um, for starters, where how do you yeah, how do you go about how do you how do you find it? Where, where how long did it take before you felt confident in showing other people what you had and how, how, how was that? <laughs> you know, I, I forget to mention that on top of that experience going from a freestyle dancer in high school, college time to being a collegiate dancer and then becoming a part of the industry and auditioning for that. I think what happened for me or what made it really official is in 2010 into 11, is when I got hired at Disney. And so I got to be a stage performer at Disney. I'm still a performer there. And honestly, I've been with the company for about over 10 years now. And performing regularly every week, every night, different stages, multiple times in a day, you know, five times, five shows a day, however many shows we were doing. I think those repetition in itself has is what made me be able to do things in continuous motion, especially being on set. I think when you're on set, it's it's easier because you know that it's going to be over after a certain amount of hours. But the conditioning and the performing every day and being at work for eight hours or however many hours, like less than eight hours sometimes. But I think that is what kind of gave me that that training, that confidence to be able to just be able to repeat things over and over. So when you're on set, it, it's it's over after you know you're done after the end of the hour or end of the day, right? And you don't have to come back and do it again. But when you work with a theme park, you're you're conditioned to do that every day. So, yeah, I, I think that kind of if that yeah. if that answers your question. Well, it kind of does. But at the same time, I'm thinking about like dancers out there that are like, I wish I was on stage for Disney, or I wish I was getting those reps per 
that you still have to put yourself in a position to get the job in the first place and you have to be able to practice in front of other people and show other people what you can do otherwise you're not going to get the job that allows you to do the thing to gain confidence in doing the thing so um and i guess maybe like for me for instance confidence is <laughs> <laughs> i'm thinking about like when i first wanted to get into filmmaking it was going to be on the actor side mm-hmm. and because I didn't know, per like, I feel like most people that don't grow up with like an industry in or anything like that. Like, I was like, there's a person on the screen and that looks fun. <laughs> yeah. But like, you don't see all the behind the scenes stuff. So I'm like, all right, like, I like the idea of myself. Like, similar to you, you're watching the video. You're like, that would be cool if that was me. Yeah. Um, I did the same. I was like watching Spider Man and I'm like, oh my gosh, that'd be so cool. <laughs> yeah. I want to put the suit on and be Spider Man. Like, that looks like so much fun. And then going and doing it and, like, saying lines in front of other people, saying, like, even even I know, like, I took an acting one-on-one class where I had to do, like, a le- lip syncing. Mm. Like, you had to pick a song and do, like, a lip sync kind of, <laughs> like, I don't, you can do whatever you want, whether it was, like, a comedic skit or a dance or, and I was practicing in front of my family, like, my parents and my brother, and I'm just, like, if I want to be an actor i should probably be comfortable and confident doing this in front of anybody so practicing in front of my parents was a thing that i was like i just have to get through this right right but the confidence in doing it was it was tough and i felt like in that space i was never able to really grasp and get into the actor space um and I found my confidence behind the camera quicker than I found the confidence in front of the camera. Right. And that helped decide my path. But I'm thinking about like the dancing path with it feels similar to like the acting side is I need to perform. Yes. yes. And I have to be comfortable in my body despite the anxieties that are yes. shown there. So <laughs> always. So or or maybe I don't know, that or maybe in hindsight it came pretty naturally for you. Like I don't like I don't know. How to, like, cause you teach people too. Like you've taught people. How do you, yes. how do you, how do you open people up? Like what, what's, uh, cause I'm sure people need that. I like, I would need that if I took a class from you. Yeah. And you know, that's the thing about being an artist sometimes, not even sometimes, I think being a human in general, we feel that imposter syndrome a lot of times. And when you talk about confidence and when you talk, when you ask me about how do I open that up as a, as a teacher, being a dance teacher, I think it's understanding how people work in different ways and what translates to one person doesn't translate to another. So finding different ways to, I think what a lot of the times what I would relate it to when I am teaching dance, especially to adults, because most of the times I would teach hip hop classes, beginner hip hop classes to adults. And I would tell them, imagine yourself at a, at a party, right? Don't imagine yourself in class right now. Don't think about that. Like you're trying to be perfect in front of these people in front of your peers, because everybody is worried about themselves And nobody is watching you, (laughs) you know, except me, I'm watching you. But (laughs) I think, I think I always try to relate it in the sense of putting yourself in the situation where it it makes most sense. And I would always tell people that, you know, imagine you're at a party, imagine you're at a club and you're just dancing and and try to make it as comfortable as possible and, and put less emphasis on being perfect. And I think that is like a really, you know, that concept of like, no one has to be good because a lot of the times that I've noticed, I've gone into dance auditions where they're looking for actors who who can dance and move, but my agency will send me to that one because they know I'm a dancer. But a lot of the times, the people that you watch in commercials aren't dancers. <laughs> they're mostly actors who just move. There, there's some kind of greediness. There's some realness, some relatability to people who, who don't necessarily are, are not professional dancers, but can make you feel like hey if that person's moving I can do that too you know and so when we talk about confidence I think it's just being comfortable in your own skin in that way and just knowing who you are and not uh not focusing on what you can do perfect so I I think I don't know I hope that kind of answers that (laughs) a little bit (laughs) knowing who you are yes yes (laughs) I guess I was just also thinking about the way you described how dance actors that are not dancers get booked for dance stuff so like a lot of the stuff that we see i was thinking about like la la land was mm. a classic yes. yeah. a classic case where i know people that know dance are like oh 
why are, you know, why is uh, Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone are kind of like not perfect with their moves or they're kind of clunky and it's, and I know that they're not actually dancers. So that's, <laughs> that's why it looks like that. It's, well, it's also because they can, they can tell the story, right? Yeah, at, yeah. at the end of the day, I think, I think it's great to have the quality of movement that other dancers and people who, who know that can resonate with. But when we think about what the industry is and what we do, we tell stories, right? If we can get past the technique and we can get past that and we get in enticed or not enticed in invested into the story, then we that that whole thing goes out the door, you know. But if we keep focusing on the technical aspects of things then you never really get to enjoy the the, the story, you know. But I, I think they did a great job. I, as despite them not being you know, I, I I think for me, like if you ask me to sing and I'm like that is one of my weakest points in in my in my uh, skill set, and even to this day, I, I was prepping. I'm prepping for an audition for tomorrow, and I I was singing on the way to LA. Here, I was doing my vocal warm ups, and I was I was singing, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna tell the story. I'm I may not hit these words or hit, may not hit these notes the perfect way, but I'm gonna tell that story. And and I realized that when I was going through those those lyrics, that like what is the story? What is this person singing about? And that's what I, I, I really want to get into theater because of that, because it, it's storytelling. You're, you're singing, you're singing these songs and you're acting, but what is the story you're trying to say? So. That's great. <laughs> that's great. Yes. At the end of the day, like you said, it's, uh, as long as you're doing it from, um, an authentic space, right? Is yes. That's, yes. Uh, <laughs> being authentic exactly uh. <laughs> <laughs> i i feel that resonates with you <sighs> yeah yeah um <clears throat> so how for you how early on did you feel like this was who you who you were because i'm imagining in high school like were you the were you like yeah i'm the dance like i, I like <laughs> I, I dance like that's, I'm, yeah. that's, I'm that guy and you're able to accept that pretty early on versus waiting till college to be like, I guess I am a dance guy. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there's mm -hmm. that mental switch of, well, I guess it's like, I guess I can actually make this a professional thing versus right. already being that. But um, I think there was a question in there, but I didn't frame it as a question. Uh, yeah. I think I kind of know what you're, you're saying or you're trying to apply or say is that I didn't know at what point in time that I was a dancer or I am a dancer, but I really did. Uh, we're talking about authenticity, right? And I think I really held on to that identity in high school that I was the dancer. People knew me as the dancer. At lunch, they would play music and we would literally, there would be like a, a moment where you could just go out into the middle of the quad and, and dance. And, and that, that was the thing. And people knew me as the dancer. And that was That's cool. <laughs> that That's was cool. You're a cool, you're a cool dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I was cool, you know, and I look back at that, I cringe sometimes, but no, it, it it really did give me an identity of who I was. It gave me that confidence, honestly, just to know that, that I had that, um, that was my way of breaking in and breaking into a community. And I felt my, I felt I was a, a floater in high school. I never really had a set group of friends that I stayed with. I, I, I just, befriended everybody and dance was the thing that got me into those groups because they knew me as the dancer and then you know so I did I did base a lot of my identity around dance but when as as the pandemic showed us you know for me at that point in time I I realized and, and I had already transitioned from dance to stunts at that point but I realized when the pandemic hit when Disneyland closed and our show was 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 not happening anymore in 2020 in March. For the, the that year of 2020, uh, I kind of separated my identity and myself from what I do to who I am. And so for the longest time, I thought dance is who I am, and that's what I do, and that's that's how people know me. And it took that pandemic to to show that like I'm not just a dancer. I I have more things to offer than just dance. And when we talk about being authentic. Like who am I as a person? Who is I'm a, my family member, my my brother, my you know my siblings? It's it's. I think that's what it took that to show me that I I'm more than what I do, you know, and and so that allowed me to be confident with who I am and be authentic in in that way. 
It's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of work. <laughs> and it's weird that that, because I know Disneyland closing down for that time was, was kind of a big deal um, for a lot, I mean, lots of reasons. But because I even know that I had some gigs that were kind of lined up to, to go into that space and mm-hmm. get video here and video there and stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's off the table now. And yeah, when Disneyland closes, you know the world's over at that point. <laughs> <in time. laughs> oh. um, okay. Yeah, you said, okay. <laughs> yeah, whatever, you whatever you want to pick from that, we can we can you just some, veer off and stuff. talk about that. <laughs> okay, it's the, who we are at the core. Mm-hmm. Yes, filters into all aspects of our lives. Mm-hmm. So, for the people at home, <laughs> <laughs> yes, how, and for me too, because I know I'm I'm working through stuff as well. Um, and we're always working through stuff. We're always, always, always learning. yes. But, like, some mental hurdle for me sometimes is, like, wait, but who am I? You know, is the question. So, how, I'm trying to think about how did you, I guess, or even, what is left over when you strip away everything else, kind of, mm. is how do you, how, how do you see the the foundational traits? Or is it is it principles that we live by, or is it? personality traits or is it i guess how do you frame that core because i'm i think about it i'm in principles potentially Mm -hmm. like that's a lot of when you get faced with things and in in decisions in life you can always go back to principle living and be like all right regardless of what's going on what do i care about and then that outwardly reflects in your actions but how do you how do you see it i that's really vague, but how do you how do you see it? It's a no, super it's vague okay. question. Yeah, I mean, what you said when you strip everything down to the core of who you are and your principles and values. Huh? I think uh, what I'm gathering is like, how do you navigate through your life? How do you navigate through that identity, in in a way? Or yeah, yeah. How do you identify yourself, or how like maybe an exercise for other people too? Is I don't I don't know how intentional that process was at that time, or if it was something that kind of was a slower drawn out because you know the pandemic held us off for a while so we right, had right. lots of time to think but um I'm, I'm trying to think of like an exercise that could help me or others think about those foundational pieces and how to really know what's important to us without you, you can kind of like strip away the all right filmmaker director eddie that's not it's not who i am i'm I'm something else and it's like all right take that away all right what am i looking at now and then it gets foggy kind of thing you know mm. um how do you how do you do it <laughs> <laughs> it's all good who are you <laughs> who am i such a loaded question yeah i think when we hmm this is the most I've heard myself talk, so that's why I'm like, what do I say now? And I'm usually, I'm usually like to be the person that likes to ask people the question more, and I like to know about yeah. other people. But I think, uh, oh, I you gonna, have I something? Gonna, yeah, please. I just got a transmission in from a girlfriend. Um, <laughs> Shout out Sarah. to Sarah. Hey Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Sarah's Sarah. downstairs. Hi Sarah. <laughs> um, the answer to the question <laughs> is authenticity and identity is the core. Is that correct? <laughs> she's off sca- downstairs <laughs> that's the text that I got but um I am more than just what I do who am I and she wants to know more about who, who you are is that correct <laughs> How did he process who he is before or after, af- before you sh- bef- after you stripped <laughs> away what you did? Okay. That's Thanks, that. Sarah. <laughs> She's downstairs. <laughs> Thanks for that question. So I think a lot of when we talk about processes, when we th- th- like talk about being authentic and being the core of who you are and figuring who that out honestly it's it's your experiences that really define who you are and and those practices is literally working through those experiences and those problems so uh, i've had a lot of things happen in my life in the last five ten years at least probably within the last seven years if i say it and 
a lot of life experiences that have taught me how to navigate through things. There was a point in time where a lot of family members of mine, my grandma, my uncle, my other uncle, um, my grandpa, people were, were passing away. And I think those life experiences really tell you about what's important in life and, and, and how, you know, what are, where are you spending your time or where, where are you devoting your time? And so those life experiences kind of taught me how to navigate through, through loss and then when we talk about loss, I was, during the pandemic, I was navigating through a breakup, a really bad breakup. I was cheated on. I'm putting it on camera. We're just calling her out. She knows who she is, but I won't say who she is. But just those, which also I mentioned too, because without, without that experience, I don't know, you know, that experience taught me a lot. And I, I feel like experiences and, and breakups and life things really teach you how to navigate through those things and also show you and shed light to what's really important in your life. You know, I think when we talk about processes as well, I think when I was younger, going through the dance industry, through the industry in general, it, we, we really come from this place of, of what do you call it? Want and need and, and desperation. And when I shifted my focus from being desperate to things to being abundant about life, like one of the best advice I got from an acting class, an acting coach, teacher was was that you, I was in Mark Atterbury's class, shout outs to Mark. And he brought in a guest and they, the, one of the questions was like, you know, what, how do you work on being an actor? What do you, what do you do? And literally, I think their question, their answer was to live life. <laughs> and honestly, it's the simplest thing is like, the more you focus on living your life and being present in your own life it will translate to your acting already because you've experienced those things and you, you you're able to empathize and you're able to put yourself in those situations and be authentic because you lived your life and you're, you're doing that so I think that kind of shifted going from pandemic from breakups to loss and all that focusing on on what's happening in my life and being present in those moments allowed me to to realize what you know, it, it's not what I do. It's it's who I am and, and those experiences that really define me. And so I think that is at the core of what has given me the confidence. And we're always working through confidence, you know. We're always working through imposter syndrome if we're good enough. And, you know, at the end of the day, when, when there's no gigs, when there's no, like, I mean, pandemic really showed us, like, what do we do when we don't have those things that we do, you know. and And so... And a long route and answer, your experiences define who you are. That's it. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, live, live life. <sighs> yes. Yes. Because I know um, confidence, like you're saying, it, it, it goes up and down. It depends on, like, I, uh, there's the, like, I, I don't, I don't know how people see confidence. Like, I'm, I, I. I have a hard time separating it from like, all right, I'm I'm this confident in this thing that I do, and I'm this confident in this thing that I do. Like when you talk about dance versus showing up to do stunts, singing versus, <laughs> or versus, singing, versus <laughs> singing versus the just navigating life. Um, yeah, it's it's always shifting and moving around and um, living life. Okay, I was gonna say because I know. Uh, we're we're all it's too easy in this world to get sidetracked with the monotony is maybe the word the monotony of yeah. like all right well you know i moved to los angeles for a reason i need to be on set i need to be getting those days so i can join the union and right, i gotta right. it's like, all right when's the next gig when's the next gig and let me let me send this out and do this and it's like wait a second i've been here for this long and most of my energy has been put towards this. What, I, what, what life have, what life have I lived? And from the actors too. Acting, there's the infinite to do list of yeah, always something to do, yeah, always I, something to improve on. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I should update my headshots. I should get my demo. My demo, my demo reel could use some work. My stunts. I have. I learned these other stunts. These aren't on camera yet. I need to get these on camera. Right. Right. And then you're like, wait, I gotta live my life. <laughs> yes. On top of that. Because that's more important than anything else <laughs> yeah okay um cool i want to <laughs> there's a couple of other 
bigger things too I wanted to jump into at some point here, but sure. I want to go a little a little chill for a second. <laughs> yeah, we can go chill <laughs> and ask about this transition from dance into stunts and maybe how that came along and how uh cuz you mentioned like Bushu and Kali. Yes. If when those when those came into the picture cuz I'm assuming those have been around for longer than we haven't really touched on that yet. Sure, so no problem. Yeah, how how, how does how that, did that happen? Yeah, how does it how did it happen? <laughs> how did it happen? <laughs> yeah. So for me again, I got into the the industry as a dancer in 2007 and I know I always say that day or that year because that's yeah, pretty much. I feel like that is a milestone for me because it was like, okay, I'm official. I got an agent, you know. But on, on top of that, it's like, when are you booking your next gig? I don't think it's even about when you book your next gig. It's, it's when are people paying you to do what you do, right? And so I had been doing dance for the longest time. And then when I booked Disney and I started getting paid and I was able to sustain myself, have an apartment and all that, like Disney was, you know, paying paying me and I and I could live off of that. And... I hadn't, I hadn't, you know, a big goal of mine that I still haven't accomplished in, in dance, and hopefully someday, maybe, if not, it's okay, I let it go, but I've always wanted to be a backup dancer, but then I think, I, I remember reflecting on this, and I, I realized that, like, and this is kind of what happened in the stunt world for me as well, too, that, like, being a backup dancer is, is hard, because you're behind the artist, and you're supporting them, and you're giving them all the energy, and I, I realized I wanted to be, uh, you know, as, as vain as it sounds, I wanted to be at the, the front of the camera. I wanted to be the center of attention. So I think that's kind of shifted my focus from dance where I was just like, no, I don't want to be in the back anymore. I want to be the focus. And so, which is not bad. I think it's just how you, you know, some people can be really cocky about it and everything, but no, like I, I want to be the lead. You know, everybody wants to be the lead. And so I think being a dancer for the longest time and, and realizing, and, and some people realize this and some people don't that you know dancers get are at the bottom of the barrel getting paid you know we're we're usually treated as props and I think I became really smart in that way that I knew that the more skills that I I had the more things that I knew the more that I work and I always tell that to my students and, and people in general like the more you know the more you work so what other skills do you offer what do you do and so what happened for me in the stunt world was I found out about this audition called um it was for a show called Marvel Live, and I'm a big comic geek, and, uh, you know, I, I loved Power Rangers growing up. I loved Jackie Chan. I, I mean, I love them still. I don't loved them, but I I went to this audition, and I learned, like, they wanted us to do fight choreography. They wanted us to kick and punch, and I had no idea. Like, I did martial arts when I was younger, but not really in that d disciplined way, and so I went to this audition, and, you know, they, they're like, all right, you're, you're Captain America, you're, you're Iron Man, and then you guys are fighting, and this is Civil War, and you guys, you know, there's a story there. And I was like, okay, cool, I can embody that, I can be this character. And I think at that point in time, they wanted to be Spider-Man. And I was like, that's my dude, that's my guy, and I love Spider-Man. And so they wanted me to play Spider-Man, and at that audition, I had no idea what I was doing. I, I was just a dancer, and when we talk about processes, as dancers, we pick up things, we pick up eight counts, we pick, pick up sections in that way. So that background in dance really helped me understand how to just pick up choreography. At the end of the day, it was choreography. And so I bombed that first audition. I had no idea what I was doing. And so after that point in time, I was like, you know what, I'm going to take up a martial arts. I'm going to like learn how to like do proper fights and things. So I, I hit up my friend Thomas, Thomas Boo, shout outs to him. Yep. <laughs> and he showed me basic fight choreography and things. And, and then I realized, man, this is what I did when I was younger. Like just pretend fighting, <laughs> you know, just pretend you're a Power Ranger and you're fighting bad guys. And so that kind of was the catalyst. Auditioning for that show was the catalyst that got me into the stunt world. And I met with a bunch of different stunt performers and I, I became a part of a training group and networked with them. And they gave me the basics of how to, you know, do that stuff. So that's what kind of led me into the stunt world was auditioning for that show. And from that point on, I just wanted to keep learning. Okay. So how how much of the of the the Matt Groove Pie is <laughs> stunts in comparison to dance stunts singing and <laughs> mm. I would say <laughs> if it's if we're encompassing 
four things that I do in my life well, I would say 25% of it and maybe 50% dance. And then the other 25% is all the in-between, like is the acting and, mm-hmm. and okay, uh, yeah. yeah. So I would say 25% of it, but it was a really crucial part of my life because again, like I said, when I became a stunt performer, when I, when I went on that path and I, I, I there's a difference between being a stunt man and a stunt performer because a stunt man or woman is exactly like when you when you talk about dance when you talk about a b-boy or a b-girl it's a lifestyle and so i never called myself cuz and this is what i learned from my mentors in the stunt world was like if you're a stunt man and stunt woman do you do fire burns do you do high falls do you drive cars do you do all these things that that's required of a stunt man or woman to do on on film and I realized I was a stunt performer because there's a difference because you, you can have the skill set to do these things, but do you live the lifestyle? Is that your lifestyle? And I didn't want that lifestyle. <laughs> After getting hurt twice, breaking my collarbone and my ankle, I was like, yeah, I'm good with stunts, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause there's a, so at the end of the day, um, is the objective like you stunts was another avenue to potentially be the the front man and get get a get a, get like an acting role in which you are requires the stunt motion and the, the your your dance background can feed into the character and that's kind of that's more that was more the goal than being like a stunt performer or is the stunt performer the the goal I think back then when I got into it and I was going through the motions of it because that's pretty much how I got into SAG was mm. I, in order to do stunts on camera, on TV, you have to be part of the union. And um, yeah, cause the, I, yeah, cause I know you've like, you've doubled for, you've, you've done stunt doubles and you've done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Go no, on, no, go no, for no. I, I, yeah, I think, um, sorry, rephrase the question or could you give me the question again, please? Um, so when you think about stunt life, is the you like you were saying you you tell students to get the more you learn the more abilities that you have the more chance you have of success is essentially the the lesson. Mm-hmm. So when you got into the stunts world and start dabbling in there, the objective was to give you more opportunity as an actor, mm-hmm. or were you trying to actually get stunt specific roles Mm. i think initially when i got into the stunt world i just wanted to work on like cool marvel shows or or tv shows and movies and be a part of that stunt team you know and it's it's hard uh being part of the stunt team because of what's required of you and then also i think it, it it brings me back to the idea of when i was pursuing my dance career is that um you know, it's a really noble job to be a stunt person on film and to do that, but you're essentially a part of the crew, you know. The stunt people literally, you know, pick up <laughs> pick up all the pads and they're a part of the crew. And, and so I think when I went into the stunt world, I, I really wanted to just, like, take wrecks and, and, like, fall and do reactions and be like, oh, my God, that guy fell. And then I, I, I realized that after getting hurt and injured that, like, ah, this is not sustainable for me. This is not where I want to be. So I think I did want to just be a part of that world and be, you know, say I did stunts and it was it was cool part of that. Uh, but after getting hurt and realizing and literally looking up at the table when I was at PT and I would look up, look up at the ceiling like, man, what, what do I really want? What do I want to be doing, you know? And I realized that's where I, I wanted to be in front of the camera. And so, you know, being a stunt double is uh i'm really honored that i got to do that and i you know recently i got to do that again i I got called back to do that but i think i know for myself that when i book a role and they're like hey we need a stunt double for you i'm like cool i'm super honored because that means i'm i'm valuable you know and like i'm not above having somebody else do the stunt for me Uh, granted i would i would love to just do the things that like you know, to do the action. But. Yeah, having that flexibility on set with being like, oh, I could actually do that one. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, have them do this other stuff, but I want to do this one specifically. Like, that's cool options to have. <laughs> yeah. I like that. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. All right, that answers the question. <laughs> yeah. Nice. 
Okay, so acting. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. Um, I'm trying to think here because what I want to ask about is... So I, I had it in my head and I just forgot it. I'm pulling up my thing. Don't mind me. It's all good. Okay. Yeah, let's talk, yeah you mentioned a couple of times. Let's dig into that. Uh, it's called... You kind of mentioned it with the PT experience, like you're staring up at the ceiling mm -hmm. and you're thinking about life and... <laughs> Who um, is it? <laughs> what is life? What, what is, is life? What is life right now? Um, so I guess just to clarify, you mentioned a couple of injuries that you sustained. Is mm -hmm. this specifically through the stunts or was this... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, collarbone. Because I'm, I'm not too familiar. I've, I have been lucky enough to never break anything so i'm hoping to keep it that way yes please. let's let's hope <laughs> keep but, it that way uh yeah what is the recovery process like going through those different things especially when you're doing it because the the things the avenues that we're talking about here dance stunts acting those all require or require us seeing you do the thing with your body right so right. as soon as an injury comes up, it literally prevents you from doing the things that, you know, that's like when you say, when if, if you defined yourself by what you did, mm -hmm. it, took yeah. away, it takes away everything. Exactly, exactly. So it puts you back into that state of like, who am I? <laughs> what is life? Yeah, yeah. So what is the, um, how long does, do those take you out for and how, how was going through that and, um, you yeah, know, recovering from injury sounds not fun no it was not fun but when we talk about experiences you know and i i had mentioned prior to pandemic and then pandemic the experiences really define who you are and when i couldn't move those two times that i got hurt being a stunt performer it it, it really did cause me to one take a step back and chill and focus on my life and and do that and during both times that i got injured so we are in the year 2023, and so I broke my ankle last year in July 2022. Prior to that, I broke my collarbone, um, my left collarbone, in 2021 in May. Yeah, okay, back to back years. Back to back years, and so in those those two years of recovery, um, how do I how do I put this into words? Because it's been a while since I got to reflect on it, but I think. Again, being being injured and refocusing your life and figuring it out during those two years, those those two times that I I was hurt, I was going through school, and thankfully that was the thing that kept me sane. I had something, an objective that I was doing. So even when I was sitting, when I was recovering, I still had school to keep me focused. And I'm in school for business, and I never thought I'd be doing business in. A million years because I, I always wanted to be an artist. I was like, no, I'm not going to go into business. I'm not going to do that. But the, that thing that I didn't want to do at most, it was the thing that kept me sane. Because when you take away the things that I'm able to do or the things that I do, but I can still learn and, and learn in different other ways, you know, Sarah and I were talking about this, how that as much as we want to focusing focus on one thing in our life or do things and when you're not able to do that, you're still building and you're progressing. So I think I was still able to progress forward in in life because I was focusing on my education and my school, which took a pause when I decided to become a dancer, some performer, actor. Everything had always, school had always been on pause. But when we talk about the the experience of, of, of PT and that, um, the first time I got hurt, really, I was... I was really excited to get through that, through that journey. I'm like, you know what? I can do it. I can push myself. I, I'll do it. And I got through it. The second time I got hurt, and these were all at, at work, work-related injuries. Thankfully, work took care of me. But, you know, going through, <laughs> going through the broken ankle, thankfully, my, my partner at the time, Josephine, shout-outs to you, she really helped me get through that time and she allowed me to stay with her and not being able to walk with with the ankle was harder the second time around because at least when I broke my collarbone I could walk and I could do things for myself but not being able to be on your feet for at least four to six weeks and it was in pain that messed with me mentally because it's just like 
it <laughs> it was a really big block, and so I don't know. I think you want to, if you want to go off of that. I feel like I've been oh, talking great. so. That's great. No, please continue. That's yeah, yeah. No, you cut yourself off too soon. <laughs> yeah, because you are. I mean, yeah, you're handicapped with the injury, so. Like you said, you had you had school to focus on, and at least that was able to take the forefront of the focus again, which was nice to have. And I'm sh did you did you revisit that during the collarbone recovery, or did that come back to the forefront more with the ankle? Are you talking about for school? Yeah, with the school. Uh, it was still going through. So I decided to go back to school in 2021, beginning of 2021, maybe February, March. This was pre-injury? Pre-injury, okay. yeah. So in 2021, I was decided to go back to school and work, uh, thanks to Disney, ha was sponsoring my education. So they, I, I decided to go back to school. And I, they, had that, they had that program prior, but I never felt really motivated until after through the pandemic time. Uh, I should have been doing it through the pandemic, but everybody has their own timeline, you know, and I felt really motivated at that time to go back to school. So I was focusing on school at the time, and then I was, you know, invited to audition for this show. And, you know, during pandemic time, I wasn't really active. I, I did some training, but most of the time I spent the pandemic. I got through the pandemic playing video games. <laughs> sure, sure, we have our, yeah. It was tough times. It was super yeah, tough. Let's, let's go easy on ourselves. Yeah, right? yeah. It was, it, was, it was a tough time. And so, yeah, I got back into, so school was the focus at the time. And then... I got back into working and then I was being active again and then I got hurt and then I had to slow down. So there was a lot of stop and go in my recovery and in my injury time, but school was always the constant that kept me going. And, and my, my partner, you know, she, she was there for me to keep me motivated too. And so when we, when we strip away the things that we do again, it, it's like, what, <laughs> what are you, what do you do? Who are you? You know, so those times really, caused me to focus and think about like what I really want in my life at this point and I think my goal has always just been to finish my degree and so that that's been the constant and then um but when we when I ref when I reflect back on that that injury um yeah it was a it was a really difficult time it was a really dark time in my life again the second time I got hurt made me really consider like what am I what am I doing and it and it, I'm still working through it. And it, it traumatized me in the sense that, like, I became less active. And I was just telling Sarah earlier that for three months, like, I was, I finished PT in December of last year, literally going into the new year. And then these last three months, I've been focusing on building my business. And so I was just in school and doing my business, uh, but I hadn't been active and I haven't been doing it. So acting was the thing that kept me going still, too, because. Yes, you need to be active. You need to be able to move. But I think without being physical in the sense of dancing or, or stunts or doing something in that way, how authentic, how real can you be on camera or how can you tell a story? And so I think that's what shifted my focus to focusing more on acting. Yeah. It's a lot there. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot. Um, but regarding the acting, yeah, that's definitely something that could be worked on whether you're mobile or not. Yeah, accessing emotion mm -hmm. and, yeah, delivering, yeah, just delivering performance. Cause I'm just thinking about, I I know I've been trying to, I want to really, I really want to show Sarah the movie. I saw, I don't know if you, The the Whale with. Uh, oh, I haven't seen that yet. I've heard about it. I mean, Brendan Fraser, right? Yeah, it's just the dude on a couch the whole movie. Mm -hmm. And he's literally like, you know, he plays a morbidly obese guy. Right, right. So he's on a couch like most of the, most of the movie. He's <laughs> delivering an amazing performance. So I'm imagining, yeah, you can deliver stuff from, from a seat or from a bed or anything. Yeah, that's very, yeah. it's a very flexible space to, it's like, all right, well, literally, what can I do right now? Let's practice on that. So Right. When you just mentioned that, I think about um, the show The Queen's Gambit. And I had no idea. I didn't know anything about chess. And that show made me like a fan of chess. And I was like, oh, how did they do that? And it's the story and, and everything. But it's it's like at the core of it. I mean, there was, I don't even know if there was some action. Maybe a little bit of action, but probably not. But it was action in the sense of intense chess playing. <laughs> and yes, the action was the chess playing. But yeah, I, I think, yeah, I, I that's the, the core of it is the storytelling, right? And the core of it is is moving people and and making people feel something. And I think 
when I got into dance, when I got into the entertainment industry, I wanted to entertain people, right? And so I think when I think about being an actor, I'm entertaining people. I'm I'm giving them a way to feel <laughs> emotions or tell a story. So I think that's why I keep going back to just being an artist in that sense, emoting. <laughs> emoting, emoting. Ah, oh, great, great. I'm, okay, I don't know fumbling all right i've got my all right i'm looking <laughs> what we're going to talk about here um well thanks for sharing all the all the recovery stuff that was uh, thanks for it. thanks for asking it's been a while <laughs> since i reflected on it but it's it's oh i remember yeah. now duh okay yes so you talk about going back to school and you talk about you've mentioned it many times we should just let's talk about yeah, the other the business this new business mm -hmm. you mentioned i think well, I guess, okay, really quick, really simple question. The ankle took you out for how much time? Because I know, I think going through the Instagram, I saw like a video, it was like a seven months update or... Oh, yeah. So I was <laughs> like, that one, yeah, that one took you out for a bit, it seems. But I don't know how long the how long that process was before you were kind of like mobile again. Yeah. Um. So when I broke my collarbone May of 2021, that took me out until... I think I went back to work around March, April of 2022. And so I went back to the show that I got hurt in. And then and then I got a new show. I was part of a new show. And actually, I was learning that new show in October, November of 2021. And so I was coming from my shoulder injury. And to go through that process, that really pushed me. When we talk about experiences, right? I was working through that collarbone injury and they wanted me to do things like, like, I don't know. I, I'll just say that they wanted to, they wanted me to be like Spider-Man <laughs> and they wanted me to do all these things. And I was working through that injury. And so that was a really good experience in the sense that it, it showed me that I could do these things, even at not being at a hundred percent with my body, you know, even though it's clear to go back to work and, and go through that rehearsal process. So I came out of that shoulder injury in February of 2022 and February, March. And then I went back to work and then, and then I broke my ankle in July. Um, and then, so I was out pretty much till December. I, I just, I, they discharged me in November of last year, but I'm still not even back at that, at that yeah. job. So yeah. I'm still working through it, but okay. I'm, I'm cleared though. So are we talking about like when you got back to work, they were expecting you to do things from like a healthy version of you or they kind of, I'm assuming that they knew that you're coming back from an injury and, or yeah. like the advocating for yourself or, cause I know like stunts is primarily a department that you, it seems like they're good at looking out for each other and stuff, but maybe, I don't know, maybe this is, yeah, stunt, stunts, the stunt world is very much like cowboys and <laughs> cowgirls where you're just like, all right, get back on the horse, you know, but for where, where I work and I, I, I do it, they are very they were aware that it will it'll take some time and they're trying to integrate me back into it and even at this point in time for me to come back to work i have all of next month to get back into shape so it's pretty much on my own time when i'm ready to come back to it yeah yeah Ooh. okay so let's I mean, i'm curious what is the what's what's the what's the what's the business can we hear about no sure sure yeah how this came to be and what you're pushing toward and mission statements <laughs> yeah <laughs> so thanks for asking that so there's this uh, app called Whatnot, and uh, people like to describe it, and I like to describe it as if you if you stream on Twitch, or if you're familiar with Twitch, where most people stream gaming on there, it's a combination of of live streaming with eBay, <laughs> like selling, buying, and selling. And so I sell collectibles on that show. I sell action figures, and these are things that I've had in my collection. I, I started collecting when I was really young, pretty much when I got a credit card i bought so many things so over the last mm. yeah <laughs> over the last 20 years i have a bunch of marvel and star wars things and so i decided that i wanted to finally get to selling and i've always wanted to have my own store like toy store and, and sell that because it was something that i was very passionate about and and so in the last three months i've been building the business on online on e-commerce selling it and what's been cool about the whole process is that it encompasses everything that I do. You know, there's a show aspect to it. 
there's a, I'm I'm hosting, which I didn't even know I would I could do, and I'm just interacting and yeah. So it's it's been it's been a journey because I'm in school for business and I wanted to start my own business. So here I am on the on the ground floor doing that. So it, it's been a, it's been a journey to to balance school and injury and, and life. Okay, so the business. So you mentioned the app, whatnot. Yes, whatnot. So you run your business through that app. And it's because I don't know anything about it. I'm just recontextualizing here. Yeah, it's all good. So eBay meets Twitch streaming. Yes. Okay, so you're on the app and you can kind of like find different shops. You have a shop on there is yeah. the way to go. And then yeah. you stream the things you're selling. You kind of show them yeah. off and that, that, sort of, that sort of, yeah. Yeah. Are you familiar with like? QVC Home Shopping Network, yeah, yeah. exactly what that is. People can show their hands or show their face. I like to show my face because I'm just used to it. Yeah, and of course, and uh, it's your chance to shine. <laughs> yeah, so it's literally Home Shopping Network QVC for the, you know, for the the older crowd. Yeah, that's awesome. No, that's cool. I know. Uh, I have a uh, a buddy of mine. Um, I don't know. His wife was talking to me about how she's been doing the. Uh, kind of a, a similar thing she was looking for she's like yeah i don't know they manage a property so they had like tenants that checked out and left a bunch of stuff behind they're mm-hmm. like oh we're trying to resell this stuff <laughs> oh, wow come up <laughs> <laughs> trying to resell this stuff and they're trying the ebay method and stuff and she was like you know it'd be really fun or like t- she's like i'm gonna go on tiktok and try to sell these yeah and yeah so it sounds Livestream. very much like well or that's yeah it's a cool thing so you focus primarily on like like you said, the like the action figures and yeah. the those the the cool, fun Marvel yeah. Star Wars, like, like Forty Year Old Virgin, <laughs> cool, cool, like the movie. I'm not. I, I'm not. I'm good. <laughs> I wasn't gonna ask. But thank you. <laughs> Clarifying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. How do we? Uh, I can put links to that down below as well, and how cool. to, how to find you. Um, sure. Yeah. I, I'm Spidey Moves. At Spidey Moves on whatnot. Okay, yeah, you're a Spider-Man fan. Right. <laughs> I am a Spidey fan. <laughs> okay. Um, anything? I am. Okay. We touched on a lot. Thanks for listening, on, everybody. If you got through the end of this video or you're here, thanks for listening. I appreciate you. Yeah, we okay. appreciate you. Thanks for having me as well. Yes, yes. We're winding down here. I want to ask. I don't know. Do you want to go? You want you want one one more heavy topic? Is that what you're looking for? Here? <laughs> Let's go. You said you want to go. Let's go. Um. Let's talk about. This feels like a completely out of nowhere question. <laughs> it's okay. We'll segue into it. We got it. Um. Uh, but it's. I'm thinking about all these different. This like long road of life mm-hmm. of coming up in dance mm-hmm. joining dance joining some dance teams going through you know being on different shows transitioning into stunts learning about that community um having your having your work family having uh you know wushu and kali and there's all these different pockets of people around and actors and people you work on set with and mm-hmm. there's lots of people around in this world how where do you how do you develop where's where does friendship fit into all of that and mm. uh who do you in classically in los angeles mm. cause i don't think we talked about you mentioned you're currently in orange county oc mm-hmm. And you grew up there as well yes i did okay yeah. so you've been here forever <laughs> i have been so you forever. probably you probably also have people around that you went to school with and yep. that you, yeah, childhood friends. So a lot of people to pick from. I was going to say that there's a, a sort of, sort of like culture in Los Angeles that it's difficult to maintain friendship. It's yes. Just, it's yeah. like hard to, it's such a hard city to navigate. It's just like a hassle to get everywhere. Like today, thanks for coming out you drove <laughs> no. all the way up to uh pasadena for uh, for the show of course yeah it's been great <laughs> and to hang out with sarah thanks sarah <laughs> but um yeah how does yeah wh- what role does friendship play in in like living life and all of that mm. 
That is a that is a tough question. And what does friendship mean to you? What does friendship mean to me? Yeah, uh, this is great. I'm glad Sarah primed me for this question because we had talked about it, right? And I liked her answer. She said, you know, friends are are people that you live life with, that you go long life with, right? And I I never. It's been tough. Yeah, she has great answers. She does. She does. She, she really she'll, does. She'll be on the show soon, people. You yes, just wait. check that episode out. I, you know. And when we when we talk about identity from earlier about high school and how I was navigating through that and how dance was my identity and trying to befriend everybody and be friends with everybody, uh, I don't know. I don't say that I was a piece of people pleaser when I was younger, but I think I realized that. And Sarah and I had spoke about this that I am very aware. My authentic radar, I, my emotional intelligence for for people. I'm really aware of. I think it's I think it's all through life experiences and stuff too, especially being older now. But I think it's I can kind of gauge when someone's being real with me or being fake. So I I just I think when it comes to friends, I I think everybody is my friends and acquaintances. And I and I spoke about this with Sarah is that the pandemic really made me realize who my work friends are and who my my real friends are, or not even real, but like the people that I associate with every day and you know there's that quote that says you know that the people that you the top five people that you spend your life and your time with are, are who you will become right and what kind of people are you associating with right and so I think I can be friends with everybody and I, I can I can network or be a social butterfly around that but when I think about the the people that are at the core of my life it's it's always my family first right and there are people that come and go into my life that are friends that that I can count on for the most part, but I think it's a personal thing as well to, to, to trust, to navigate through that. So for me, friends are, are, are people that, that I can drop everything that I'm doing and be there for them and they can do the same for me, you know? But also there's this other quote that I, that I like kind of really resonated with me is that um, said something along the lines of like, stop expecting people to be you. Right. And what does that mean? Like I, I, I treat people the way that I want to be treated, but it's also fair to understand that people aren't going to be like you and people aren't going to, you know, like the golden rule is like treat others how you want to be treated. But at the same time, like you can't expect people to, to act the same way that you act or conduct yourself. So I think at the end of the day, like I just like to surround myself around people who are positive and and um, on a on a path that motivates me as well. So, yeah, when I when I think about the closest people in my life, it's it's usually my friends and just this handful of people that that I talk to every every day. And even then, some people, my best friend from childhood, like from middle school, came back into my life, and we had a maybe I don't know, we hadn't spoke for like two three years, and then we just literally reconnected, and then it was like time had time hadn't passed, and we just connected again. I think those are the kind of people in my life that that I like to keep close, where we can just vibe off of each other or we can just just pick up where we left off yeah you can just be mm -hmm. you can just be and live that's great <laughs> yes i'm <clears throat> there's i don't know if you've heard there's um you mentioned the golden rule yes have you heard of the platinum rule no <laughs> please tell me uh maybe you can google this to confirm i don't know if I'm <laughs> google this up. good old google but uh it's treat others the way that they want to be treated Ooh. is the platinum rule and then wow. i know my my logic brain clicks in i'm like but i don't know how they like how am i supposed to know how <laughs> yeah how do i treated? know it's so that way the gold that's why the people usually lean into the golden rule because at least they know in general what they feel is polite and they can start with that as a foundation until they learn more about the other person is right, like oh right. okay this is your preference i can adjust for that and lean into the platinum rule but that's just a thing, but okay. Yeah. Platinum rule. Okay. I like that. I like that. Yes. Friendship. <laughs> yeah. Cause I know, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to really navigate like, yeah, the work friends versus the like, all right, well, I want to like, who do I actually want to take the time out of my day and, and make sure we spend time this week. I'm like, Oh, let's grab this. Let's, yeah, it's, let's, let's, have dinner this me yeah you're inviting me over to your place for dinner and then we're just hanging out and doing nothing like this is like that's mm -hmm. versus like networky dinner or you yeah know, it's, it's all kind of yeah. like oh we're actually just networking right now this isn't right you know, it's hard to 
trying to navigate that. This yeah, is Los Angeles. It's hard. <laughs> I mean, Sarah had mentioned it earlier too that it's intention, right? As as you get older, you literally have to schedule your hangouts, and as as opposed to when you're younger or when you're at work, it's out of convenience. You know, your friends that are out of convenience, we're all at the same place. We'll all go hang out, or you have the friends where you're like, you're like, all right, I'm gonna. This on this day at this time I'm gonna meet you meet you and we're gonna hang out and talk and catch up and and I think that that's at the end of the day is an intention right like what what is um, not that we have to get anything out of it it's it's more of that and that's why I wanted to to come here and I'm glad that you asked me to be here is that that I think it it's one of those things where it's just like these conversations really allow us to be introspective because it's intentional. Like I, I'm literally reflecting back on things in my life that happened and how I got to where I am and where I, where I am that I didn't even think about because as an artist, as how I like to conduct myself is I just keep moving forward. And I never really look back until people ask me to look back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's why it's been, this, this, this conversation has been really cool because I, I rarely get to talk about myself in that, that way because most of the time I'm always wanting to know about the other person. And and so for you to ask me these questions and me to talk, I'm like I I don't know what it feels like. I'm like wow, am I am I talking too much? <laughs> no, it's great. You're awesome. Um, yeah, because I think about like, I mean Sarah and I. It's you mentioned that she was like scheduling has come into play. Yeah, like, yeah. Because she's so she's got her schedules booked out like two weeks in advance. So for her, yeah, schedule. And I, I don't know what your schedules are like if you like live freelance life, if it's more like a freelance lifestyle <laughs> yeah, it is. where it's kind of gig to gig and you kind of... Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, sometimes you got like a wide open schedule and sometimes yeah. you're just booked mm -hmm. and it, you kind of almost don't know until you know. So it's almost like the now is easier. Like for me, I live freelance. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, this week I have nothing going on. I can hit up this buddy. Hey, you're free today? Right, right. Versus... For her, it's like, oh, I need a schedule ahead. So yeah, yeah. I know we're done, so it's hard to... And then I'm like, I try to plan two weeks in advance and something comes up and I'm like, oh, I got to take this gig. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's <sighs> tough. That's friends is hard. <laughs> friends is hard. But no, it's, that's great. It's good to reflect. Um, I'll reflect on my own episode. Okay? <laughs> it's not here about me Yeah, right I'm excited now. for that. I'm excited for yeah. that. Um, I feel like, I feel like, yeah, we've navigated a lot. I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling good. Cool. How are you how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. You know, <laughs> it's it, this is good. And what what is that quote that I hear? I don't even know what the quote is. You got but some good quotes. Thanks. You know, I, I I attribute it to a lot of podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I, when you're driving a lot, I like to listen to the School of Greatness, Quick Brain. Those podcasts really shaped my thinking and really helped me to become just the, the, a better version of me and so I think you like when we talk about being intentional with our time and what we're doing so when I'm in the car I, I'm like in class listening to those and those those podcasts really allow me to be introspective right and questions always lead to the answers is what they say yeah, and and when you ask these questions it's like you know because a lot of the times we don't know where we're going what are we doing you know and, and I think when you ask these questions it helps me think about that and because we're always so distracted right you know with, with with phones and i i come from that that time <laughs> back in my day we didn't have internet you know where i was in that transitional period where there was no internet at the time and you when, literally yeah when was your first cell phone <laughs> i won't say when the year <laughs> but i'll say middle school was or uh, no sixth, way. sixth no grade way. yeah you but didn't, you didn't get a cell phone in middle school did you at sixth grade <laughs> Well, sixth grade middle school. I didn't have one till senior year of high school. I, yeah, right? And it was like, who am I going to call? My mom's like, who are you going to call? I'm like, I don't know. I'm going to call you. Can you pick me up? <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, sorry you were saying. No, no, you're good. All right, so just to lead us out, last question, just to, because you mentioned it, like, we don't know what's going on. We don't know where things are going. Uh, so where are things going right now? <laughs> you know, what are you, what are you looking forward to in this uh, 2023? We're already in March, right? Yeah, third, the first quarter is almost over. Exactly. Yeah, we're heading into April Se soon. So, um, yeah, what are you looking forward to? What's, what's happening? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. I honestly hadn't thought that far ahead and which, which is tough because a lot of times I'm just kind of like going from getting this objective done, getting the schoolwork done and, and then move on to the next thing. I don't know. And so I haven't really reflected that far ahead, which is, this is great. Cause I'm glad you're asking me about that. I think, 
I know that I'm slated to graduate in December this year. So hopefully if I can keep my grades up, uh, I will finish my school and get my degree. And then my plan is to move back to L.A. because I, I feel like it just, you know, being home, I, it's great. I love being home with my family. I love hanging out with them. And I literally feel like I'm in college. You know, I'm, I have like so many roommates. There's 10 of us at the house, Filipino house. And so I, I really feel like I'm in a dorm. <laughs> so I'm in my room. So I, I want to get back to L.A. I want to focus. Uh, I, I think where I want to be, too, is more established in my business and back to work. So I think, yeah, I, I think one, finishing school and then getting back to L.A. And um, it's nice to have goals in the acting career, of course, but I think I think it's just continually practicing it because I'm on a break from it this month. But anyways, uh, I've had a lot of life experiences that just kind of go hand in hand with acting because what, like, life imitates art, art imitates life. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Those sound like those are great things. Yeah. School... Yeah work all the things yeah. okay well <laughs> um last last question for people that do want to keep up and follow on the on the journey where is best for people where can people find you thanks so you can catch me on instagram at matt groove spelled with zeros gr zero zero ve matt m-a-t-t and um yeah pretty much i just use instagram I, yeah. okay let's shout out the uh the the business spot oh yeah again. uh so if you use whatnot i also have a business uh, account for for my account so at spidey moves on whatnot and instagram as well nice perfect all <laughs> right great yeah thanks again for coming out and being being on and uh yeah i that's yeah <laughs> Thanks for having me, Eddie, and th <laughs> thank you for listening and being here. Um, again, thank you. It's, it's been an honor. For sure. Likewise. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. See ya. Bye, everybody. <laughs>